All right. So today, we're going to be delving a bit deeper into uh, some of the support reactions that we've seen over the past couple of days. So uh, day nine in two dimensions, we saw a lot of supports, um, rollers, rockers, pins, fixed connections, and same thing for last class in day 10, saw the three-dimensional versions of ball and socket joints, um, short links and other things of that nature. So one thing you probably saw and may have questions about uh, two classes ago in day nine is if you look at all the examples we did, uh, the majority of them have a pin connection on one side and a uh, roller on the other side. And you know, one reason for that sometimes is you need to worry about thermal expansion and things expanding and contracting, which is why you want a roller on one side. But if you don't need that, then wouldn't it just be better to have two pin connections to be a bit more stable? Um, and the answer to that is yes and no. Um, yes, in terms of it will be more stable, but no, because if you remember in two dimensions, we can only solve for three unknown reaction forces because you only have three equations of equilibrium. And so in situations like that, if you have two pin connections, you'll end up with four reaction forces, uh, two at each pin, um, and you, cannot, you won't be able to solve for all four reaction forces because you only have three equations. And that is what um, today's lecture is going to talk about, um, something called static determinacy. So for equilibrium, uh, we want to be able to not only have equilibrium, we want to be able to actually solve for the reaction forces. Um, and also those reactions, those supports need to actually be supporting it in the correct manner. So there's no point, for example, having um, three roller connections all in a straight line because three rollers still won't prevent it from moving left and right. We'll see an example of that uh, later in class today. And so today's kind of going over how do we actually arrange these uh, support conditions so that we have the right amount to both ensure equilibrium, so ensure this thing does not move, but also ensure that we can actually solve for the reaction forces that are being developed. So our first kind of definition is static determinacy. Static determinacy is, can I actually solve for the reaction forces? So this um, mainly boils down to um, how many unknown reaction forces do I have? Again, in two dimensions, I have up to three equations, so I can have up to three um, unknowns, and if that's the case and I can solve for them, then my system is statically determinate. So everything we've done so far has been statically determinate because we've been able to solve for the reaction forces. If I have a scenario where I can't solve for my uh, reaction forces, either because they're arranged improperly or because I have too many of them, that is called statically indeterminate. So I cannot actually solve for the reaction forces. And then the second part of this is kind of making sure that those reaction supports are actually doing the right thing. So again, for equilibrium, I don't want my object moving left and right. I don't want my object moving up and down. And I don't want it rotating. Um, that's two dimensions anyway. In three dimensions, I don't want it uh, moving in three dimensions or rotating around three axes. So um, in two dimensions, there's three things I don't want it to do. In 3D, there's six things I don't want it to do. Um, so to actually make it not do those things in 2D, I need three reaction forces or three supports um, to, to stop those three things happening. Uh, again, in 3D, that'd be six things. But even if I have three, that doesn't mean they're necessarily doing the right thing. Um, so two of them might be stopping the same movement. Like I said, I could have two things that are both stopping it moving left and right, um, but that leaves only one thing to both stop it from moving up, down and rotating, which may or may not be the case. So if I have two things that are doing the same thing, or two supports that are um, stopping the same motion, um, those are called redundant supports. Um, and that's also going to act or also going to result in static indeterminacy. So even though I have three equations and three unknowns, if I have two forces that are going through the exact same line of action, uh, there's no way I can, I can separate those and tell what each of them is doing individually. Um, so that's something else that actually results in static indeterminacy. So even having three equations and three unknowns doesn't um, necessarily mean my system will be statically determinate. Um, in situations that I talked about earlier, like where we have two pins, sometimes that'd be a good idea. And um, in this class, we won't be able to be able to solve for those unknowns. But as you go on in your education, next classes, you'll be able to figure out um, and have some new equations that actually let you solve for those extra unknowns. So 
Um, it's not the case that every single building ever built has a roller on one side, because um, you can actually solve for those using uh, more sophisticated theory. But for this class, we're going to stick to what we've already seen. So here's a scenario that I was talk talking about earlier. If I have this beam, I have a pin connection down at A, a roller connection over at B, but in this case, in the um, providing a force in the horizontal direction. So I have three equations, or I have three supports. So three unknowns. Uh, I have three equations. So it seems like I'll be able to solve for this. Seems like this should be statically determinant, uh, but it's not because AX and BX um, lie directly along the same line of action. So there's no way I can separate those two out into two different uh, forces. All I'll be able to solve for is the um, total of AX plus BX or AX minus BX if you want to take the direction into account. Uh, for example, if I take the moment around point A, uh, moment around point A gets rid of all the forces at A because there's zero lever arm. Um, same thing for B though, because BX goes straight through point A. Um, so if I take the moment around point A, zero of my reaction forces actually show up in um, the equation and there's nothing left to balance this force P. So these are called improper constraints. When I have the right amount of reaction supports and forces, so again, in two dimensions, that'd be three of them. In three dimensions, that'd be six of them. So I actually have three, um, but I can't actually solve for them. They're not doing the right thing. As I mentioned, these AX and BX are both stopping horizontal motions, uh, AY stopping vertical motions, but nothing stopping this thing from spinning around point A. So if I push down on this, uh, there's nothing stopping BX from going straight down. Um, and so there's nothing stopping rotation. So even though I have three forces, they're not doing what they should be doing. So that's called improper constraint when that happens. Um, three dimensions is a bit trickier. So again, I have uh, this example down here with this bent bar, ball and socket joints in A and B. Uh, the problem with this is that all these reaction forces lie along uh, this line go that goes through A and B. And that would also be the rotational axis of this thing. So if I came and pushed down on it, it will actually rotate around that axis. And rotation around that axis is essentially the same thing as taking the moment around that axis. And there, again, there's nothing in terms of reaction forces that are stop, that are going to stop any motion around that axis. So that's what this thing will do, is just rotate around that axis. And so again, I have six reaction forces, so the right number to stop all six motions. But they're not stopping all six motions, so they're um, improper constraints. And last thing is called partial constraint. So partial constraint is essentially um, just not enough reaction forces or not enough reaction supports. So again, in 3D, or sorry, in 2D, I need to stop three things from happening. If I only have two reaction forces, then I can't stop three things because each reaction force basically only stops one thing. So if I only have one pin connection, for example, that's only two reaction forces. Um, that's only partially constraining things. That's only stopping two out of three uh, motions from happening. Same thing in 3D. If I have less than six reaction forces, um, there's going to be some motion that's possible. And so that's partial constraint um, when I don't have enough reaction forces at all. So this thing will move because I don't have enough reaction forces. Um, as opposed to the previous case, improper. Improper means I do have enough. They're just not doing what they should be doing. So that's um, static determinacy, um, improper constraints, and partial constraints. So again, the best way to kind of see this is to go through some examples, which we'll see later in class today.